we go for? What are we doing again? Oh! Hello! <laughs> Another episode of Origin PC Live! Are you ready? Are you ready? Ready. I'm ready. Let's do it. Hey guys, welcome to Origin PC Live! My name is Alexis Roselle. I'm the community lead at Origin PC. I'm Kevin Walshileski, co-founder and CEO of Origin PC. Just a quick recap for those of you new to Origin PC. This is a show where we talk about everything gaming. We discuss our likes, our dislikes. We discuss tech news. We discuss what we're up to. And we're going to chat it up with a special guest today. A very special edition of Origin PC Live because our special guest is here in the HQ. We're going to be joined by Naomi Kyle. Uh, she's going to be chatting with us later on in the show. You can interact with us throughout the show by posting in chat, tweeting at us, do whatever you want. We don't care. Just interact with us. That's all we uh, Lewis is going to be watching your feedback throughout the show, and then towards the end, when we have our Ask Origin PC segment, we're going to get to those questions. Kevin, what was our previous post of the week topic? I have a question first. Is Naomi going to be here, like, via Skype, or...? No, live here. Oh, She like, has visited us. Like virtual reality, or...? What do yes, you we're going to have a hologram set up. Augmented setup. reality? What do we're you going to be joined by the Naomi Kyle hologram and the Tupac hologram. Hopefully. We couldn't... We, we're still working it out with his agents. <laughs> So she's actually going to be here. She's oh, actually wow. going to be here. We're super amped. Man, we should have worn something better. I know, right? I'm wearing is my, my beautiful Word Cloud Origin PC shirt. And Kevin, his Eat Sleep Gamer PC shirt, which you can find the usual. at www.originpc slash gear shop. So, to the post of the week. Yeah, here's today. Last week, the post of the week topic was, what kind of useful robot would, actu would you actually use and why? Examples include a bodyguard robot that would, of course, protect... Uh, a cooking robot that can automate meals. When I first read that, I thought it was automated emails. That'd yeah. be nice. Or a foosball robot that you can get better at foosball. That would be uh, sweet. So that's our post of the week. We'll announce the winner later. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in on Mixer, on Facebook, on Twitch. See you. Everywhere. Let's kick off the show. Hello, friends. Our first news story is about Red Dead Redemption 2. It has been delayed, much to my dismay. Uh, for those of you that know, I've been wanting this game forever, so this was heartbreaking news for me. I should get a more serious tone, so let me do that. Originally planned to come out in spring, Red Dead Redemption 2 is now scheduled for October 26. <laughs> As an apology for the delay, Rockstar also shared some screenshots of the upcoming Western open world game. This also marks the second delay of RDR 2. Hooray! Uh, as it was originally going to release last fall, but then it was pushed to spring and now fall again. As long as they make it good, really, who cares? Kevin, what do you think about the delay? It's not really that big of a surprise. Rockstar Games, um, they get delayed. But the quality is going to be there. So my first reaction was, no, this sucks. My second reaction shortly after that was, well, we have a date now. That's true. And they're, they're, they're not going to miss that date, so... I'm looking forward to it. There's plenty of other games to play in the meantime, so no big deal. Those are facts. Uh, like I was saying, as long as they make the game good, they can delay it all they want. I mean, not all they want. Don't give me a 2020 delay, because I will have moved on by then. But I am <laughs> waiting anxiously for what I know is going to be a masterpiece. I'm wondering, though, you know how we had predicted that it was going to be game of the year? With it coming out so late, you think there's still a chance? Of course. Yeah. My prediction stays firm. Red Dead Redemption, Game of the Year 2018. I guess I'll stick to it too, because I don't want to wait until October <laughs> to really know. That's true, that's true. Uh, what's up next, Kevin? What else is going on? This gaming news is about a stealthy announcement made by EA about a game coming this fall. During an earnings call, EA revealed that they will be releasing a new Battlefield game this October. No, de no details about the Battlefield game, though. Uh, we don't know what time place it's going to be. We don't know exactly when it's coming out. But they also revealed that um, Anthem was officially delayed till 2019. No, no big surprise there. <laughs> Last week there were reports of this delay. Now it's official. So Anthem is officially delayed, but we have a new Battlefield game. What do you think about this, Koozie? Um, I think it's pretty cool as long as they don't make it in the future again. I don't like the futuristic settings so much. I, I mean, Battlefield 2142 was pretty cool. But I really like when they stick to the roots and go with like the old military stuff, like World War II or World War One. This Battlefield one, it would make sense if they go back to World War Two, right? right? That would make sense. It's kind of odd that they announced the game without the time period, so leaving us hanging. Like, what's going on here? 
I know that um, the Call of Duty World War II kind of got a fire on them, so maybe they'll try to do it better than, than Call of Duty did, which would be neat. I'm really excited. I love Battlefield. It's probably my favorite shooter ever. I'm hyped. I'm super hyped for that game. October, yeah. Red Dead Redemption, and Battlefield? Come on. That's going to be crazy. That's going to be crazy. It is pretty crazy that they're saying it's coming out in October, and they haven't announced anything about it, really. Yeah. No details, really? Maybe they're waiting until E3. Very strange. Yep. Quite possibly. Probably... A prediction there. We'll talk about that later. Correct. Up next, now for some Origin PC news. Earlier this week, we received an Editor's Choice Award from Tom's Guide for our Origin PC Neuron. Thank you so much, Tom's Guide. Here's what they had to say. If you're seeking a made-to-order PC that hits a sweet spot between price, size, power, and flexibility, the Neuron is one of the best PCs you can buy. We also received an Editor's Choice Award for our new Millennium from Hot Hardware. Thank you very much, Hot Hardware. <laughs> this is what they had to say. With the changes that Origin PC made to the Millennium's custom chassis and the current crop of hardware, this year's model is the best version yet. What do you think about these awards and reviews, Kevin? Well, I mean, thank you so much. Thank you to Tom's Guide for the awesome uh, review of the Neuron desktop, one of our best-selling desktops. And thank you to Hot Hardware for our, our, our uh, Editor's Choice Award for the brand new Millennium just announced in January. Just announced. So it's amazing to see these awards. awards. Um, but, you know, don't take our word for it. I recommend you go to these websites, check out their reviews, read what they have to say about it. They give their pluses, they give their minuses. Uh, and some of them have uh, videos as well. Hot Hardware has a really cool video. So yeah, check I, like, them out. I like the Hot Hardware video. It came out sweet. Yeah, I'm, I'm always happy to see it. Uh, like I was mentioning during yesterday's live build, we put in so much work to releasing these products. Um, and then we just put it out in the world and hope for the best. And to see the feedback. Um, mostly positive and to hear all these awesome reviews coming in and to get all these rewards it's been fantastic and the payoff is there and we feel great here so we can't thank the reviewers enough we can't thank our community enough thank you guys for everything yeah uh, nothing nothing means more to us than when we hear our customers praising praising their products we love that when we hear when any customers give us feedback we love to hear that uh, and then right behind that is reviewers after uh, right after customer feedback is reviewer feedback if a reviewer that is their professional job to critique PCs for a living and they give us an award, that means the world to us. It means good things. Uh, what's up for our geek news? Kicking off our geek news is a story that only the worldwide internet could bring us. <laughs> On Facebook a couple days ago, a man, Carlos Sanchez, posted an image of himself holding a sign that said, my wife said if I get one million likes, I can name our son Goku. Well, fans of the Dragon Ball Z franchise went to work they shared and liked the photo so much it went viral. Um, and 1.5 million likes oh. later, this man has gotten his wish. His wife has agreed. Hold, she's holding up her end of the bargain, and his son will be named Goku Sanchez. <laughs> Goku That's Sanchez. Awesome. What do you think about this, Alexis? That's pretty awesome. That kid's probably going to be one of the coolest, most popular kids ever. Um, I mean, hopefully he likes Dragon Ball Z. What if he doesn't like that stuff? <laughs> that didn't even like, cross oh, my mind. Yeah. I don't know. More Dragon Ball references. I hate this show. Hopefully, he's a fan of the series. I <laughs> uh, hope that kid grows up loving Dragon Ball. That would be that. That would be the pinnacle of it. If he's a huge Dragon Ball fan, if he goes cosplaying to events, I'm sure he will be. That's going to be amazing. I just um, hope that the the wife is not really forced into it. That she's actually like liking this and on board and happy about it. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, congratulations to that family. It's awesome that you got so many likes. That's pretty neat. Um, our final geek news story is about some video game movie news about Mario. Aha! It's now official. Illumination Entertainment of Minions and Despicable Me fame will be working with Shigeru Miyamoto and Nintendo on a movie starring Mario. No other details are known, but this marks Nintendo's return to feature films. The last time we saw Mario on film was a 1993 live-action movie Super Mario Bros., which I loved. Wasn't that when John Leguizamo played Luigi? Right? Yeah, correct? Yeah, nailed it. This also marks another partnership between Nintendo and Universal Studios, who are currently working on Nintendo Theme Park expansion. That's going to be neat. Uh, thoughts on the Mario movie from the creators of Minions, Kev? Well, I love Minions. I love Despicable Me. Uh, I, this sounds like it's going to be amazing, but I don't know. I'm nervous. I'm just nervous because how could they possibly live up to the hype of creating what we want to see in a Mario movie. I know, I know. It's, it's true. just impossible. It's an impossible amount of hype. But I give them credit. They're going for it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to check it out. What, no matter what the reviews are, I'm going to check out this movie. I wonder what direction they're going to go in. Is it going to be a serious action film? Is it going to be 
comedy laced? Is yeah, it I'm be... really like, I have no idea. What are they going to do? <laughs> Who knows? I guess we'll see. Um, is it going to be a love story about a princess? I don't know. I'm sure there will be a princess involved. Do they have? They don't I have any of the be casting a strong yet. Princess. They don't have any of the casting yet. Who would you want no to see casting. play Mario? Here's a fun question. Oh man, I have no idea. Neither do I. <laughs> I can't think about it. We'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> Up next is How about recent the releases. real voice of Mario needs to do Mario. Oh, that would be cool. That would be cool. I don't know how good he is on as a movie personality, but that would be amazing. Or at least if they have, do, if they have him voiceover if, if it's a CGI movie. Yeah, I think it's CGI movie. Yeah, so. Oh, that'd be awesome. No, that would be amazing. Then they have to include him. Yeah, so you got to get the original voice. Done. Book it. <laughs> Book it. Make it happen. All right, up next, recent releases. Let's do it. Special shout out to Blue Microphones for these incredible mics that we're using. We use them every week. They never fail. We love these mics. Kicking off the recent releases is Dissidia Final Fantasy NT, available on the PS4. It's a port of the Japanese arcade game, which is a fighting game with action RPG elements starring characters from the different Final Fantasy games. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, this game uh, also features 3v3 combat, so you can build up your teams and swap in your characters. Looks pretty cool. That looks pretty neat indeed. It's a fighting game then? Yeah? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I like him. I like him and I dislike him. I just don't like being bad at them. That's all. All right. Up next, we want to give a shout out to Subnautica. Having come out of early access recently, the underwater, underwater survival exploration game is now available on PC. Whoa. Build your own underwater base, explore the depths of an uncharted ocean planet, and encounter all sorts of wildlife, ranging from cute little fish to massive and deadly predators. This is a title that I have been playing for quite some time. I was in the early access um, very, very early on, and I've played it a ton but I'm, I've laid off on it for a bit, and they've added a ton since then, including like a story element. So I'm really excited to get back into it. Congratulations to their team. Uh, this is now available on our February promo, correct, Lewis? Yes? I, oh, no, not, not yet? yet? Okay, not soon. Yet. Sorry. Sorry. Fake news. <laughs> Fake news. Um, <laughs> it will be available at some point. Um, but congratulations to our friends over at Subnautica. Look at all those reviews. Man, that game looks awesome. I haven't played it yet. It's on my backlog. It's, it's high up on my list. Oh, next, another Final Fantasy game also launched this week. This Final time it's the PC Fantasy. port of Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. PC players can now play the HD remaster of Final Fantasy XII and explore an open world, partner up with familiar characters, and fight countless monsters and bosses. Countless! Countless monsters and bosses. That looks pretty awesome. Did you ever play XII, the original one? No, uh, I have to admit I have not kept up on the Final Fantasy side. I'm not a... a um, a turn-based player. Yeah. But I know Final Fantasy has not changed to action, so I'm going to play the new one when it the comes to The new one is awesome. The new, new. Really good. Yeah, I can't wait to try that one out on PC. Not my style. All right, entering early access. This week is Battalion 1944 on PC. Whoa. A multiplayer first-person shooter set in World War II. Battalion focuses on close quarters 5v5 combat reminiscent of classic World War II shooters. This game is aiming to create a competitive PC community and a skill-based shooter. Pretty awesome stuff. This game looks awesome. I've been following it very closely. Can't wait to try out the early access. It looks like a blast. I love World War II games. It looks familiar. Like, I've seen this. I know, millions of times. <laughs> I don't look, mind it. It does look unique, though. It looks different in its own way. Yes, yeah, for sure. Oh, it looks fun. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't tried it yet either. Um, but I'm probably going to try it this weekend. Congratulations to them for finally entering early access. Um, up next is our blatant plug of the week. Probably should have waited to mention our February promo when I actually had it up on screen. Let's do that now. <laughs> Show your love for gaming. Purchase any gaming desktop and gaming laptop and you receive a free external ADATA 256 gigabyte SSD, free digital copy of Assassin's Creed Origins and Total War with an Intel Core i7 on an Eon 17 SLX, a free champions pack for Quake Champions with the Ryzen 5 or higher, Free digital Steam key of Shot of the Avatar and a free $50 gift card for Gamer Sensei. It's a lot of stuff. Fantastic. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Showing our love for gaming because it's Valentine's Day. You get it? You saw what we did there? Chat? Anyone out there? Hello? Cool. Um, do not forget about our Hearthstone giveaway. <laughs> I was about to go into the other one. Our Hearthstone giveaway, uh, we teamed up with Hearthstone. They're giving away an Eon 15S. You can find all the details 
um, over on the Blizzard Twitter, over on the Hearthstone Twitter, and over on our Twitter and Facebook. Uh, check out the links. This is a U.S. only giveaway. Sorry, international fans, but don't worry, because up next, I want to talk to you about our worldwide giveaway. Our worldwide giveaway with PewDiePie is still live. The winner will get announced on February 9th, live on stream. Uh, we'll also reach out to the winner via email. So, But please be at the show, because if your name gets called out, you know how awesome that is? You know how excited you'll be? This Kronos is packed with a 1080 Ti. It's absolutely powerful. You can sign up for it right now at originpc.com slash PewDiePie. Um, up next, our special guest, Naomi Kyle, is getting her own live build tomorrow here on twitch.tv slash originpc, mixer.com slash originpc, and facebook.com slash originpc. Tune in tomorrow on Saturday, a special live stream. We haven't really done anything on a Saturday before, so this is pretty exciting. Saturday live stream. Saturday live stream. Anything goes. Anything goes. It's not official work. (laughs) That's right. We're off work hours, so it might get crazy. It's going to be at 1 p.m. EST. We're going to be joined by AMD for this one. Big thank you to AMD for putting this all together. It's super exciting. They're going to be in-house um, Leslie from AMD and Naomi are actually going to be building the PC while our builder John is just going to be on the sidelines helping them out. So it's going to be a ton of fun. We're going to walk them through it and see how they do. I'm sure they're going to do fantastic. All right, up next we got Eat Sleep Game Repeat. Now it's time to talk about Eat Sleep Game Repeat, where we talk about the games that we're currently playing. This segment is sponsored by the Origin PC Gear Shop, where you can ah, buy yes. buy your own Eat Sleep Game Repeat T-shirt. Not this one though. Alexis. Exclusive. Alexis, what do you eat, sleep, game, repeating? Um, so, I, if you watched the live build yesterday, I gushed about this for hours. Now I'm going to gush about it some more. Prepare yourselves. Old school RuneScape. I had never tried it before. Now, here's the thing about me and MMOs. I've played them all. I heard so many things about RuneScape. I heard so many people tell me I'd love it because I'm a big UO fan. And it really does stick true to that, that, um, that same feel. It's a skill-based progression. Um, the graphics are cheesy, and I love that. I love old scape stuff or old school stuff like this. Um, Rootscape just hits all the marks for me. Uh, the quests are fun. The community's amazing. They're hilarious to just be around. There's a ton of people. It's free to play, and it's going to be available on mobile soon. So now I get to play all oh the time. Oh my gosh! On your phone, the, you can play. Yeah, on my phone, wow. on my tablet. It's going to be a blast. I can't wait to give it a whirl um, on mobile. But I'm playing it now on PC all the time. Um, I tell everyone on our Discord channel, if you ever got, if you ever want to play with me, just hit us up there on Discord. We're all getting a big group together. Uh, Kevin, what have you been playing? I'm playing a game with an old school flavor, but it's a brand new game called Ooh. Celeste. This game it's is nice. on the PC and other platforms. And you can see the art style here, 16-bit, 8-bit uh, graphics. Um, the music is awesome. The story is really cool. Um, but the game is freaking hard. It's annoying. It's super annoying. How many times <laughs> have you died? I've died. It, so when you log into the game, it tells you how many times you've died. It reminds you how many times oh, you've died. It has brutal. a little skull and a number. Brutal. And I logged in a couple days ago, and I thought it was around 300. It's the last number that I remembered. But lo and behold, I've died over 500 times oh, in this man. game. I'm only on level 4, or, or you know, world 4, if you will. And uh, I've died a lot of times. And I was actually showing it to Isabella. I'm like, hey, let me show you this new game. It's super cool. Check it out. And the only thing she saw was me dying 20 times. <laughs> I died 20 times trying to do this one little area, and I couldn't do it. So I was like, let me show you this game another night. But it's super fun, super addicting, but then all at the same time, super frustrating. Eh. Um, definitely eh. going to give that one a whirl. No, I'm going to try it, but, I mean, frustrating games is what I was angry about. Yeah, I know. The frustration gets to you at times, but... But I keep going back. Exactly. You keep going back, and then when you complete it, such fulfillment... Yes, right. when I complete it, there will be tweets. And this is on the PC? Yep. Uh, yeah, sweet. They, yeah, it's on PC out. and other platforms, mm-hmm. but of course, PC platform of choice. Why wouldn't you go that way? <laughs> um, so up next is our break. Stick around, guys. Naomi Kyle is going to be joining us right here. That's why there's so much space between us right now. She's going to be live here in studio. She is live here in studio, but she's going to be sitting right here between us. Uh, so stick around. Uh, we're going to have a short commercial break. We're going to show the new Prime video. If you guys haven't seen the new Prime 3.0 video, that is our Ooh. brand new Millennium V3 and our Genesis V3 and our L-Class. So watch it. Enjoy it. We'll see you soon.
new guest, who this? Sponsored by AMD. <laughs> uh, welcome back to the show. Thank you, AMD, for sponsoring this special segment. Uh, it's time to chat with Naomi Kyle right Hi. here in the studio. Yep. Uh, Naomi is a multi-talented actor, host, and media personality, just to name a few skills. Is this going to be weird that I'm saying like your no, whole thing? No, I love thing? this. All I right, perfect. This. You may know her for her work at IGN, including hosting The Daily Fix, a daily show covering the latest in gaming and geek news. Mm -hmm. Other previous work <laughs> includes <laughs> podcasting for Gameloft and being on TV and film. These days she's streaming and creating new original content for her channels including Twitch and YouTube. Yep. You can also find Naomi all over social media including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Everywhere. Naomi, how are you doing this I'm morning? good. How are you? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And, and Kevin. Thank you for coming. Yes. You're in the Finally studio. Finally in it's the real. studio. We've it's been not talking virtual. about doing this for it's real. A for a very time. long time. Yeah. So. And it's finally happened. It's, you're the first special guest that we've actually had in the what? studio. In the oh studio. my gosh. It's well, usually during, honored. we usually have them on Skype or Discord, but this is fantastic. We've like wanted right this here. here. I'm actually here. Yes. I'm stoked. How do you like Miami so far? So far, um, so far? I love Miami. So you guys have been giving me like a really good tour of, well, I've, we've already gone and got some Cuban food, which was amazing and so delicious. You got to do it down here. Yeah. No, I mean, you really do. It, it really is a whole other experience. It's the type of food you can't really get anywhere else. Sure. Very so true. Um, I, I am loving it so far. It's nice and warm. Um, yep. I know it's like really hot in the summertime, yeah. but now we're in the wintertime, so it's a bit more tolerable. And You came like at a good it. time. Yeah. Came at a good time. And a lot of palm trees, too. I didn't expect to see so, so many, many palm, palm trees. trees. You didn't know about the palm there. trees. You didn't no, know about I that. I didn't know. Hmm. And flying over, I, I saw the, uh, the wet uh, wetlands or the marshes. Right. Yeah. Everglades, yep. Everglades. Oh, so beautiful. It's and gorgeous down there. Yeah. Um, there's uh, awesome nature walks down there. But here's the cool part. I go to these nature walks down in the Everglades where the alligators are literally, there's nothing in between you two. Oh, they're wow. normally just like very, very calm because they're trying to get sunbathe and that's where they're, they recoup their energy. But it's pretty frightening, especially some of them are like 14 feet long, oh my just gosh. chilling on the side. Yeah, it's pretty scary. I but it's imagine. super cool. It's such a really, really And there's cool like a place. many, many alligators. Like, oh, yeah. I wonder yeah. what the actual number is, too. It's, it's insane home. down here. Yeah. But they make it to communities. Like, there's been videos and all the stuff of in just alligators in backyards or in the <laughs> swimming pools at golf courses it's insane amazing yeah the, the actual block that i grew up on we had a canal in our backyard so right there in our backyard there was alligators hanging out and <laughs> what would your parents snakes do snakes would go into well we had a screen so okay. we have a screen there <laughs> the screen is very like, protective I, that would be anxiety very, very protective screen <laughs> like if i had kids and i had a backyard where i had there was a known creature that could kill my kids like constantly living there i would be terrified yeah, I don't know. <laughs> most I people props are. Props to your parents for, for doing that. That's crazy. When you Iguanas, grow up around water them. moccasins, all sorts of stuff back there. Yeah, wow. it's terrifying. Wow, what a crazy, crazy environment Miami is too. I'm learning a lot about Miami. And you've only been here one day. Just only one day. You barely day, guys. scratched the surface. Tomorrow I get to experience. Where are we going tomorrow? Tomorrow we're going to Wynwood. Yes. You're gonna check out Wynwood, yes. and we're going to South Beach. Oh, the that's world famous Beach. South Beach. Yes, where we, everyone told me to check where are we that out eating, on Twitter. Most importantly, we're eating at the best restaurant in Miami, my favorite restaurant, Joe's Stone Crab. Oh, oh. I love wait till you try get fresh seven. stone crab. It's oh, gonna I love seafood. Blow your mind. Good. This is going to be excellent. I cannot wait for this. <laughs> so, what else is new with you guys? Uh, not much. We're doing this live show. Yeah. yeah, you guys. I was gonna say because cool. you introduced me as like, oh, you know, I, I talk about news and gaming mm -hmm. and geek culture. I'm like, you guys do that now. Like, I know. You guys are basically me. Yep. And doing for many cool that enemies. for the PC or if it weren't for you paving the yeah. way. Yeah, it did. I don't think we would have ever done this. Really? <laughs> yeah. Of Come course on, not. get out of town. <laughs> that was our when we were putting this really project good. together. We were like, look at the daily fix. That's kind of what we wanna go Emulate. after. You know? yeah. yeah. So it's been. Well, you guys are killing it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And awesome commercial breaks and like just. The whole thing, the way you organized this, you guys had a spreadsheet and everything. I yeah. was like very, I was blown away. We're always That's our producer. Happy. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to our producer, Louis. He puts everything together yeah. behind the scenes. The behind the scenes man. Origin PC fam, you guys got it good. Oh, there. Like good. You, heard, you heard it here. You heard it. <laughs> For <So>, me. So, <laughs> how have you been enjoying 2018 as far as pop culture and gaming? Uh, it's a good year for gaming. I mean, we have a lot of big titles coming out. Oh, First yeah. of all, Red Dead Redemption 2, which is going to blow everyone's minds, I'm sure. My heart. Yep. Yes. I know. Is that your heart? Is that like I your love, favorite That's my game favorite of game of all time. time. Yeah, I mean, me too. It's going to be it's going to be amazing to go back to that world and then Oh, yes. We have God of War. I mean, just so many like hyped up games Last of Us 2. April 20th. Yeah. God of War April 20th. Yeah. Official release date. I know, finally. So I feel I think for all of us it's just it's a good year. It's going to be another good year for gaming. I think last year everyone had like a 
overall like bummer year and like personally and you know in the ter terms of like world events but yeah. uh but gaming we were strong and in movies we were like nerd culture was there <laughs> so oh, yeah. I, i'm expecting strong. that again for 2018 this year yeah yeah far cry 5 this this month or next, next month, month. Next, next month February 20th. that's another really exciting title this month. i am yeah, so February stoked for month. that game oh that's right yes yeah. i'm going to play a lot of that game i'm playing monster hunter right now to kind of i don't know how are you liking it? World. I like it. Have yeah. you played it? I have. I tried the demo before it came out. The oh, you did. I guess the early access beta. Yeah. It was my first ever Monster Hunter experience. Yeah, it's mine too. I've never played. I've it played games that. like it. Like Dauntless is one that kind of emulated Monster yeah, Hunter. Yeah, Dauntless does have. That um, and it was very cool. This one is just out of this world, especially when you play it with friends. Like that's really what makes. Yeah, it. I haven't done that part yet. So no. I'm still and like going out there to like slay my first monsters and. Uh, it's oh, really it's still good. brand new then. Yeah. It's still brand new. Yeah, and I gotta uh, get in there and join you then. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we should definitely play. Like I've been I streaming it, right? it all the time. Yeah, yeah I'm streaming yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Is, uh, Which is what your I'm... community liking it? Every all your yes, yeah. yes. Everyone's like, should I play this game? And I'm, I'm like, yes. And then everyone who's been playing it, they're helping with you know tips and things like that. And because it is a very complex game. I mean, yeah. it's an RPG, but it's like a real RPG, like super deep. So I have a good time talking with my audience about it and stuff. And I can't wait for Far Cry 5 now to like, I just can't, I'm excited in general to be able to play games all my time. I know. <laughs> yeah, because for a long time I couldn't, so. That one I'm really hyped about too. Far yeah. Cry 5 looks great. Uh, they changed the setting. It's in it's in the United States. Yep. It's, yeah. it's really neat. They kind of do that now every time. It used yeah. to be always like these tropical environments right. up until like three, I think, or three, no, three was still tropical and then four and five. They did they the, completely the different primal direction. one. Which yeah. was, I thought that was so cool. That yeah. was one of my favorite ones. Yeah, that was actually amazing. They also did, uh, what was that, Far Cry Blood Dragon? Oh, right. That oh, was yeah, like, uh, I think it was an expansion. One. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I listened cool. to that soundtrack for that game for like a whole year after that came out. I forgot about that one. Oh, that, that one was cool. Far Cry. That's it's a good one. It's so cool. Like, it takes you back to that 80s aesthetic and the music and everything. Just They do such a good job with the song. characters. Yeah. And the bad guys are always bad. The really worst bad, bad guys like and like yeah. the well, the most well played and like right. before, like they had Troy Baker, Far Cry Four, and I don't know who Far Cry Five is. It Troy Baker again? No. I'm not too sure. Someone else. Someone else. I don't know. Is the main character. I don't know. Any any voice actors. Their bad guys are so good. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, they they knocked it out of the park with that. In fact, do you guys watch Better Call Saul? No. What yes. is that? It's like the branch off. From it's a, they branched Breaking off from Bad. Breaking yeah. Bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's okay. like a spinoff with Saul, who's right. like Saul Good Goodman is oh. like the lawyer in Breaking Bad. Anyways, he has his own show now. I don't know if it ended or if it's still ongoing. But the one of the bad guys in that show, spoiler alert, was the bad guy in Far Cry 3. Like, uh. the actor who played and, like, was actually, uh, you know, when they mocapped him, he looked like the main the actor. Oh, that must be and so And so cool. now I'm see, I see him in Better Call Saul, and I'm like, that's, that's the bad guy in Far Cry 3. I can't unsee that now. <laughs> like, can I just see Far Cry? Uh, no, so no. the hair's a little different. He's okay. got, I think, just the shaved head. Overall, the same thing happened to me with uh, yeah. Trevor from GTA 5. Oh. Yes. Now I see him. I s he you was see in, him in uh, Walking Dead. Was it Walking Dead? I saw He's in Walking Dead. Yeah, it must have been in there. Yeah. I saw he I he saw was in he... something else, too. And every time I see him now, I'm just like, well, it's Trevor again. Was he ever in Supernatural? <laughs> I, want to say I don't know. Supernatural has so many episodes. So it's yeah, like they do. He, he could have maybe. I know he, he's one of the bad guys in Walking Dead. He's part of the the saviors. Oh, okay. Right now in this current series. Oh, Good spoiler alert! Sorry. Damn it! Spoilers, spoilers guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're watching the show. Yeah, you know what? It's, there's gonna be a ton of them, so <laughs> buckle up. Just and it's never. You know, I I say spoilers are like. People get angry about them, but when you hear a spoiler and you actually go and watch the movie after hearing the spoiler, it's never never lives up to just seeing what the spoiler is and actually experiencing it right, once right. you watch it. So I'm like, I think the way you spoiled it was like very minimal. I think you're fine. subtle, subtle spoiler. Subtle spoiler. Actually, and, like, you've been you around for like two seasons already. So yeah, I think so you should have already seen it by now. Catch up. Have you yeah. played uh, Have you played Bioshock Infinite? Yes, I played a lot okay. of Bioshock. Okay, so Bioshock quick Infinite. spoiler story. Okay. I was playing Bioshock Infinite and I was streaming segment. it on Twitch yeah. and the Twitch chat spoiled the game for me. The oh, Entirely? That's right. Yeah, they told me the whole ending of what happened. So I'm like, well, hold up. Are you serious? But <laughs> but the game was so good and so well done that it still blew my mind. It still blew your mind. Even okay. though it was spoiled. Yeah. So <laughs> there's nothing it's like it's like yeah. reading and no one's gonna be writing like a novel as to what exactly happens at the you know, they say the spoiler in like such general terms. Yeah, that just you can like, Oh hey, it. by the way, blah blah blah. This blah, is what happens, like, but hmm. then when you experience it and actually see it and the world and, and everything. Yes. Yeah. And actually the ending in infinite's kind of 
so sideways. Like it blew my mind yeah. for literally for weeks. It's even it's like three, hard four to weeks. I was still thinking yeah. about it. I'm like, yeah. wow. <laughs> it's true. Drinking it's your coffee game. in the morning, like I can't believe how that game ended. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like I'm two like, years what? later. You really still? did that. <laughs> so you've been creating content on YouTube and on Twitch. How's yes. that been going? It's been going good. Uh, it's um, it's been tough getting a schedule going because I worked nine to five, like doing IGN for so long. And yeah, that like, was boom, my boom, life. Boom, 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 nine to five. Nine every day, you know, hosting a show every day. Literally every day of the week, I had a show live. So I um, I've been trying to do some passion projects, like so that's a lot of emailing and going to meetings and things like that. But in between that time, I have to like find time to stream games and then make YouTube content which I did recently when I went to Canada, and I cut together a bunch of video pieces out of that. And again, this is all like build up, so it's the start of something much bigger, and uh, and it's been going well. Like, And Twitch streaming especially has been something that last year I really like went in all, like completely gave it my all, and it was huge, and I still have like a huge audience, and people, it's, we're called the Kyle Empire, and people are loving it, I like and I that. finally got new emotes and like badges for everyone, so. Sweet. Uh, being a part of that platform has been really uh, helpful in like getting me to have a regular schedule of just content creation and um, yeah now I'm just having a fun time like getting to know more people who are joining the audience and um, getting to know uh, the gaming side too which I couldn't do for a while now this year I can finally do so um, people are liking it and awesome. I'm just enjoying doing it so well congrats what Thank do you, you speaking of streaming what do you think about the the platforms and how they're taking off like mixer twitch Facebook all Facebook, that stuff. yeah I, I think if we can get more content out there and the more platforms, the better. Like, you know, we have Amazon creating movies right. and shows and stuff. And Netflix, same thing. So I don't see, like, I, I think it's great that now all platforms are taking on, you know, what Twitch has been kind of the, at the forefront of, which is streaming games. Right. And, you know, it just gives more opportunities for more people to get different audiences so that everyone can kind of be successful in their own way. And, uh, and I like it. We, like, I prefer Twitch. I think that there's a lot more... Like we can, you can do so much with Twitch. You can play like games with your audience. You can, right. you know, get people to s sign up for things. Like there's just, uh, there's that newsletter, you know, you can send out a newsletter as often as you want. Yeah, you that's can pretty neat. Get, you know, custom things and perks for your audience that, you know, other platforms don't have yet. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't explored with Mixer yet that much. I don't know, I guess you guys have because yeah. you're on Mixer yeah. today. Um, I'm on everywhere. Yeah, you're everywhere. Um, so, but I, I very much like Twitch, and and I I hope to someday like have that be a part of even if I go to YouTube Gaming or like if I could stream on all those platforms. Yeah, absolutely. Maximize the the viewer count. <laughs> um, I think every platform has its benefits. Yeah. Right. Um, they well, all have different saying, things Twitch, that they introduce. Yeah, Twitch has its own thing, has its own like. Uh, it's just very audience driven. Like right. it's very absolutely. much about your community. Yep. And then I think the other platforms. Again, not speaking for a mixer because I haven't really had a chance. Maybe you can talk about it more. But I think Facebook still has a bit of catching up to do yeah, on that side. Absolutely. And then I think uh, for YouTube gaming, it's always been uh, it's been it's been a good like way to, especially if you already have a YouTube audience, mm -hmm. to still do streaming and gaming. Um, so I, I like YouTube gaming for that purpose. But uh, I think Twitch has the you know reaching out to an audience. Kind Absolutely. Of, like you can really connect with your audience. On Absolutely. Twitch in a way that I don't think other platforms have. I agree with you there. The whole adding the emotes, uh, building your community, the whole newsletter thing, like you said, and building yeah. your own page. I think you know stuff like Facebook and YouTube. They have the backbone. You know, yeah. they have the high quality video streams, yeah. which is great. But then the one thing lacking on those platforms, in my personal opinion, and I'm sure plenty of people agree, is the chat. Like, for example, with Facebook, it's kind of in the comments section, so it's kind of different. Is it hard to follow? It is hard to yeah. follow. Same thing with YouTube. Twitch nails it. Mixer does an awesome job with that, too. Mixer has... I imagine Mixer's a lot like Twitch. A lot like yep. it. Yeah. Um, it has awesome ways for the chat to interact with the streamer, mm -hmm. so there's you can lay out these little buttons under your stream where as they watch your stream, they accumulate points. Mm -hmm. Those points could then be used to maybe make a loud noise or change your voice, stuff yeah, like that, yeah. add lights, which is pretty cool. And there's also like a really low latency okay. between the streamer and the chat. So those are the benefits I find from Mixer. Um, but I love all the platforms, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Twitch Twitch is the the father, I guess, right? Yeah, They're yeah. the ones that, that laid it down for everyone and kind of made it kind of made this possible because people didn't even know what this stuff was for the that's longest. That's true, yeah. So, really happy to... And now it's just becoming, it's growing. It's growing so 
coming so to rapidly. Everything. Competition yeah. and competition is a good thing yeah. for, for all of us. Exactly. For all of the users, competition is good. Yeah. You know, now there's Netflix and Amazon creating content, but it just means there's more content for all of us. Yeah, and so we, if there's people we all on have Facebook, a chance to tell our stories. For people on Mixer, that just means yeah. there's more content to yeah. watch. Imagine if Netflix did a game streaming platform. Whoa. <laughs> game flicks? kill it. Game flicks. Oh. Game flicks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't steal this idea, Netflix. Oh my God. We'll know where you got it from. <laughs> Copyright that right now. <laughs> so, can you share uh, any of your plans for this year? What are you going to be up to? Yes, uh, I can definitely share a few things. Well, I'm I'm always working on like creative projects. So uh -huh. I and I love video creation, and I think that. Um, if I'm able to tell a story, if I'm able to create something fun or a fun video, like the fact that anyone can do that nowadays and the fact that I've always been a part of that world for, as part of my career, like I want to continue that down that road. So I want to do more production. So I'm, you know, concepting some show ideas and I'm working with brands like Facebook and things like that to um, see what I can create. Like it doesn't That's matter awesome. what it is, like if it's a show that I host or, you know, a story based uh, piece of content. Like, I want to do a lot more of that, and I want to dive deep into, you know, the producing and directing side of things. So, doing stuff like that, that's a vague answer to your question, but something more specific is that I'm working on a podcast. Oh, um, that's awesome. So, that has, like, a time window of launching, you know, within the next month or two. Oh, I can't really soon. say what the name is yet or, like, anything like that, but there will be a gaming podcast once a week going down. Oh, um, you heard it here. That's yeah, you exciting. heard it here first, actually. Wow. So for, first, uh, yeah, breaking news. Yeah, breaking news. <laughs> the and then uh, that will be launched, and you can just follow me on Twitter. Most likely it'll be Twitter where I reveal it. But um, in any case, you can follow me and find out more about that as it progresses and as we can reveal more. Sweet. Ooh, can't yeah. wait. I'm That's exciting. Really yeah. looking forward to this. Yes, yes, I'm very stoked about it, too. Um, okay, so another question. You've seen the gaming industry grow and evolve mm -hmm. firsthand. Mm -hmm. What are some gaming industry highlights for you? Highlights, ooh. So like overall, just my whole career, what was what yeah. were some of the highlights? Are you talking about like moments in Moments gaming? in the gaming industry that you've or, seen happen okay. for sure. Yeah. Um, I think when it uh, we got into a huge discussion about VR mm -hmm. and kind of seeing Oculus and their presentations at like things like E3 and I think that that Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think that at, uh, when I first started working, I didn't expect gaming to really change much. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, oh, we're going to have new consoles and new games, and that'll be it. But then VR started taking this like crazy turn, and it was I'm I'm just it's it's a highlight for me because it's like, oh, I was around at the start of this where it all huge began. yeah where it all began. Like it it was a a pinnacle point for mm -hmm. VR. You know, it's it's the start of something bigger, and you know, it's only going to keep growing in my opinion. And um, and I just can't wait to see kind of where it goes. But I can be like, yeah, back in my day, you know, <laughs> I was there when VR was just a little baby at this company called Oculus. And, Amazing. Yeah. We used to have to put these big things on our heads with these cables. Yeah, yeah it was a huge thing. And now it's going <laughs> to be like, like see-through. <laughs> yeah, it's just going to be like a chip in your brain. And now you can see VR and live in that world. That is I was, pretty cool. Yeah, actually. it is pretty cool. Um, it kind of reminds me, Ready Player One. Have you guys read that? Of course. Yeah. So it Multiple like, times. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about with that, like how deep into VR gaming and and that world that, I mean, the cr the creation of a world where VR is literally where everyone lives and breathes and goes to school and everything. It's. Uh, I don't know if that's ever going to be our future, but it's definitely the so. possibilities <laughs> of what you can do. Yeah, like things absolutely. like go to an entire new planet in VR and you know create your own character and meet other people. Um, I think that's already happening. And yeah, it's absolutely. something that's going to keep growing. I like the potential for educational stuff in VR. I think yeah. that's really cool. Education every in every field. Yeah. I mean, it could be for, you know, for students, but it could also be for medical. It could be yeah. for, you know, people trying to learn a craft or, you know, you have online courses, people who take out online courses after college or whatever. Now it can all just be you go to class in VR, in VR every day like you don't have yep. to go to a building you don't have to go to your computer even you can just pop on this headset and then you're in class you know and we'll get a like, real back in my day you. we used to drive this thing called a car <laughs> yeah. Yeah. to and this thing to called a places. school <laughs> and you have to find a parking spot for this car yeah and you have to walk to this school and walk into this room and meet other people and find and a seat to sit down <laughs> and be contaminated with all these germs yeah, yeah exactly you <laughs> and then this conversation to a is human being in virtual reality yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is kind of safer in some ways i think you know people won't have to drive around as much but it for sure yeah i think i think there's uh 
I'll, there'll never be a world where there's no human interaction, but that's just my I opinion. Hope not. And I think it's healthier. It goes that way. I think it healthy a human interaction is, is a good thing. Of course. Um, but yeah, like you guys are saying, it could go many directions. And Dude, for education, it's a huge opportunity. I mean, you could learn how to build a PC in VR. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, right. A follow-up question. Yes. Do you have any advice for anyone that's trying to break into the gaming industry? Um, I think you have no excuse to not be creating content mm -hmm. because it is literally at your fingertips. <laughs> if you are anyone who uses social media at all, you have an opportunity to create content about gaming, to talk about games, talk in whatever way you want. If it's just news about games or why you love a certain game or like you have no excuse. So if you're trying to break in, you need to go on some social media platform because that is our world now, <laughs> um, and just create content. And it doesn't matter which platform. I think if you're, uh, I think video creation, definitely put a focus on that. Like you can do, uh, definitely practice your writing if you want to do more of a, become more of a reviewer, journalist sure. uh, type, uh, you know, person in the gaming industry. But um, you have no excuse and you have that at your fingertips and people are seeing that constantly. People are craving that constantly. So, and, and when people go to look at your resume and you're looking for a job at whatever, some video game media house or video game developer or what have you, you can, sh you know, you'll have a place that you can show people your work and, yep. you know, yeah, it could be, it could be anything from, I created and built this awesome PC. I know gaming, like look at all the games I played. like. There's endless possibilities when it comes to that. So really just put focus on doing it <laughs> and putting yourself out there. Um, you know, make it consistent and do a lot of it so that when people go to want to hire you, they can look at, you know, your backlog of what you've done. And if it's any good, they'll hire you. Yeah. Right on. But you can also create your own company. I mean, there's many yeah, routes. Yeah, that's you can true. Go. There's many routes you can go. Like kind of how Kevin did it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, yeah, yeah. I worked for many, many years in the gaming industry, learning from others, and then eventually spun off and did my own thing. So. Yeah. Look yep. for events too. I think events are great for networking. Yeah, networking, networking is networking is important. Yeah. Yep. For sure. And hype yourself up. Don't uh, sell yourself short ever. Yeah. That's yes. No matter what you do, have confidence in what you're doing. Yeah. And there's a ton of different avenues now that you can take. Remember every. Just because you don't know, any, know anything specific gaming, um, this is just my take, every gaming company has an accounting department, yep. has a marketing department, has a sales department, uh, so there's different ways to break in. The opportunities are out there. I get asked this question a ton, which is why I, mm -hmm. I want to ask you. Um, so yeah, definitely don't, don't lose hope. Don't let your first try be your last try. Yeah. Um, keep trying to get out there. There's, like Naomi said, there's plenty of avenues you can take, uh, so good luck to each and every one of you guys. Yeah. You guys will, you guys will crush it. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> All right, we're gonna switch gears to something different. Okay. So Isabella was asking me about this, and I was also very curious. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we follow you on social media. Yeah. And we <laughs> noticed that one day, all of a sudden. The color of your hair changed. I know. I was. <laughs> and we were like, "What is this on purpose? Or this is an accident?" Yeah. So tell us what happened. Um. So to preface it, I've been blonde for like more than ten years. Literally since I got out of high school, I've been blonde. So and even when I was a kid, I put some sun in one time, and I didn't know that it was actual bleach, and it bleached my hair blonde. <laughs> and I thought I'm just naturally blonde, but no, it was the sun in. Um. But yeah. So. I, as a blonde and someone who's recognized as a blonde in the industry, and that was like a huge part of my brand, mm -hmm. um, one day I, so I actually wanted, okay, my Halloween costume that year was supposed to be Captain Marvel, who's blonde, like famously blonde. <laughs> but she had like more of a golden blonde and my blonde at the, that point had reached to like a bleach because I had gone uh, purple at one point. Leslie's here in the room. She's got purple hair. Famously is known for pur purple hair. <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, it had, you know, washed out and then I was like this bleach blonde. And so I was like, I want it to go more golden and, you know, a bit of a more casual blonde is what I call it. So I went to a hairstylist. I didn't know her, oh. um, but she had great reviews on Yelp. <laughs> and uh, Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, it looked like a reputable salon, too. I walked in, and it looked really good. They offered me tea. It was amazing. <laughs> so, and I'm like, here's what I want. And I showed her a photo, and I, I, we'd been talking about it over text message, too. And I was like, golden blonde, golden blonde. And I said that repeatedly. And she even told some of her coworkers as we were at the salon, yeah, we're doing a nice golden blonde. And she was like playing with my hair and stuff. And so we're having a conversation and then she started, you know, the process. And, you know, I saw this like really dark color go on my hair at first. And I'm like, 
Okay, maybe it's just like a precursor. She's gonna like bleach it to like make it more of a golden blonde because I understood that my hair at that point didn't have any golden goldenness to it. So I'm like, okay, I don't understand the process. I'm just gonna trust her. She's the she's expert. Gonna roll with it. Yeah, and we're having this conversation about her kids and everything, and she's like dropping things and like a little loopy. So oh. I was like, okay, I guess maybe she's just having an off day, or is you know or something I don't know didn't want to make judgment so I just went with it and then she like washed out whatever she had done we'd gone to like the bowl where they rinse your hair a couple times and it was just brown it was like so dark brown and I could not shocker. believe it shocker and she was drying it she's like don't worry I'll like lighten a little bit when you wash it and stuff and I'm, I'm just sorry it came out so dark and I was like yeah it's like completely brown like so brown oh, if you guys gosh. look up photos you'll yeah. see it was really dark and there's no going blonde at that point like directly from that color to blonde so <laughs> so yeah it actually happened as a mistake that's how i tweeted it people sometimes saw it and were like is it real did that really happen are you joking like is this uh, photoshopped it's, yeah <laughs> or is it photoshopped but no it really happened to me i did not pay her she was totally understanding she's like i know i messed up and i don't know what was going on with her that day but did, you, did you go with a bad yelp review or did you just move I just, on with your uh, life well there it was through a different <laughs> portal i yeah i didn't go to yelp actually because i just felt bad but but I shouldn't feel bad because she totally, like, you know, going from dark brown to blonde again, like, look, I have to do this little mini transition before I can actually go back to blonde. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I lightened it, you know, but since then, um, just by going to a different hairstylist who I trusted and uh, had gone you to live before. You live and you learn. Yeah, yeah. You live, you learn, exactly. Um, so I, I actually did give a review, but to the portal that they use to book appointments. And so it was like Makes a bit sense. lighter. So now at least her employer, maybe we'll see it. And, and then find out about it. But yeah, I just <laughs> was, I didn't, I never in my life had gone to a random hair, I've gone to random hairstylists before. It's always been fine. Uh, I just never in my life thought it would come out so dark brown. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing those posts uh, and I was like, what yeah. the heck yeah, happened? Yeah, everyone was like Oh that. my gosh, how could it possibly I know. happen? And but then everyone has always wondered like what I looked like as a brunette, so it worked out in my favor. Exactly. <laughs> I gained quite a bit of Twitter followers. Oh, there you that, go. That's so sweet. <laughs> it kind yes. of helped. It worked in my favor to some extent. Yeah, now you have a life story. Forever. I do, I do. <laughs> I'm going to tell my grandkids about it, just like I will about the VR thing. <laughs> the VR thing. And, uh, Back in my Day. Back in my day, you go to a hair salon and you d come out with a yeah. random color. Yeah, you could have just you selected kids, you just click 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 yeah. <laughs> You kids yeah. just click and then just move. Just click and it's like a different color. <laughs> if you uh, misclick, it doesn't matter. You just unclick. Exactly. <laughs> Undo. I will go back to blonde eventually. I should put it out there. Soon. It's out there. I know, I know the community is waiting for that. I know. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so tomorrow we have a very special live build with you and AMD. Yes, pretty I'm exciting, for that. right? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be doing it here at Origin PC, and it's going to be powered by AMD Ryzen Threadripper CPU. It is which beautiful. we have right here. It is so beautiful. And the RX Vega GPU. Um, that looks amazing. Is this going to be a massive upgrade to your last PC? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. So my PC, just for perspective, is six years old. Um, it's another one I built. But uh, this time it'll be a new one and completely customized and everything. Have you seen you this packaging see before? It. It's That's amazing. The coolest. This packaging is amazing. When yeah, we, I was when we first say, got it, seen this before? I almost it's super don't cool. want to take it out of the box because it just yes. looks cool like this. When we first got it, when they first launched it, we did an unboxing here and it was one of the coolest experiences. I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. Like normally first a time we ever did an unboxing video. Like okay. okay, cool. Yeah, this one's First like time ever doing an unboxing video with CPU. Spin the wheel. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And here's this other one. Oh. Ooh. Very, very powerful up. stuff. What do you, is this going to be your so new? I've heard so much about this right Vega. Now. Yeah. Is this going to be your new gaming, streaming, content creation? Everything. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's, that's uh, my computer as good as it was back six years ago. Um, I've done so much on it from editing video mm -hmm. to, uh, with, which takes long to render every video right now. Cause, uh, and things are bugging out. Like it's on the outs for sure. So this is perfect timing for everything. Perfect um, timing. Yeah. I do content creation, gaming, uh, you know, sometimes I need two Elgatos at a time depending right. on what platform I'm using or what I want to do for the stream. So. I'm definitely in need for like an upgrade and something that will be powerful enough to support everything that I do. Do you do the two Elgatos, for. like one for a camera and one for the a console or something, or how? how um, or the two Elgatos, I think one time I wanted to do, oh, because I have this really nice Sony camera mm -hmm. and that requires a lot more uh, 
to feed through my computer. So right. I had to have a separate Elgato for that camera alone, and then yeah, for the gaming console that I was awesome. using. Awesome, awesome. And uh, but unfortunately, I tried that the other day, and wasn't successful because my PC needs an upgrade. Needs more power. Needs more power. Yeah, exactly. Have you seen Elgato's new Cam Link thing? Have you tried that? No, I haven't tried that. What it's I also really, need to really get awesome. is their touchpad. The stream deck, the stream deck. Right over here. yeah, which it's you guys awesome. are using. It's fantastic. Nice. We love it. Yeah. So the Cam Link is is kind of like a USB adapter, and it has an HDMI <laughs> port. <laughs> Listen, it's okay. You guys can't it see a, it. It's off camera. Yeah, we're not talking to the floor. There's someone there. We promise. Um, there's a, it's a U USB plug-in, and it has an HDMI port, and you plug the whatever HDMI camera you have into it, and it turns it into a oh, webcam. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's I awesome. I need to do something like awesome. that. Awesome. Very, very cool. Because I love my Sony camera. It's like are my okay, big Leslie? splurge that I did <laughs> yeah. last year. <laughs> we're all right. Leslie almost died here in studio. We had a game. A game box following it right now. Luckily it was an empty game box. Yeah. yeah. The limited edition, collector's edition game <laughs> box falls on you. Watch out. Watch, Watch out. out, yeah. Um, okay, are there any games or media that you're going to be looking forward to this year? Like any movies, yeah. TV oh. releases, all sorts of stuff. Movies, Ready Player One. Yes. Definitely on my list. Spielberg, and it's one of my favorite books uh, from the past two years. It's been out for a while now. Um, maybe three even. Gosh, how long has it been since I've read that book? What would you say? Three years. I, I, read, I, I think I first read it like Definitely three years, years ago, and yeah. I read it again this year. Yeah, yeah. So, or yeah. last year. I'm so sorry. that movie I'm looking hu hugely looking forward to. Um, uh, Infinity Wars happening. Yes. Uh, it's going to be sorry, fantastic. Sorry, Infinite... Wait, no, yeah, Infinity Wars. On you got it. Yes, yeah, so sorry, Infinity Wars. Um, so I'm looking forward to that one. And uh, for games, I mean, there's Far Cry... F I already kind of mentioned that, mm -hmm. but yeah. yeah. Far Cry 5, totally up there. Last of Us 2, God of War... Um, I know there's one I'm missing. Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption Red Dead. we mentioned as well. Last, um, of, Last of Us 2 is this year also? I want to say I think it so. is. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I just don't remember if they have nice. a release date for they it have, yet. They don't have a release yeah. date for it yet, but it was supposed mm -hmm. to be. I guess we'll see. Yeah, E3 will reveal it. Yeah. Maybe that. Actually, I was surprised RDR, RDR2. Um, R2-D2. <laughs> I know. You don't want to say R2-D2, but it's so close to that. It really um, is. I, I think I was surprised when they announced that release date because I... I was I was just expecting everything to be announced at E3. Yeah, yeah. true. But everyone's hopefully they'll show. Well, year. now they're going to show more content at E3. Yeah. Maybe they'll have a playable demo there. They probably will. will. Yeah. We uh, can wish. We can hope. We can hope. hope. Every it's hope funny. Every E3 beforehand, Alexis is wishing and hoping. I hope Red Dead is there for playable. I'm like, oh no, my man, gosh. no she way. Me to my first but E3. this year, I'm like, I think it will be there. <laughs> yeah. I that think would you're be finally right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, another one that I don't know when it's coming out at all, but. Um, uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2. Oh, yes. Uh, awesome. So that was one, was when you were talking about E3 and like what he, Alexis, hopes for every year. Um, for me, it was Beyond Good and Evil, like a, oh. a sequel or something. And it looks like this will be a prequel or something. Anyway. Right. So, um, but they announced that, I remember. I was like blown away. I was crying. I know. Literally crying when I they announced I, I it. I cried for Red Dead Redemption. Yeah? I did, yeah. You did? <laughs> I teared up <laughs> like Oh a my baby. god, we're crying, buddy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh. As soon as I saw the trailer, I was like, no, I'm fine, <laughs> man. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm going to be okay. Yeah, exactly. So I'm excited to see if they have anything at E3 for that. I don't know if uh, probably won't have it playable and it probably won't be out for, for like Hopefully. a while, but yeah. So what do you enjoy most about PC gaming compared to other forms of gaming? Um, the usual thing. I think for me, PC gaming is just faster. I mean, I'm not going to play Overwatch on a console. Like, I think it just is better on PC. Good answer. Yeah. Like, I just think it'll, it's just, it's such a smoother experience overall. Um, but then there are those games that I don't mind playing on console, like The Last of Us or, you know, I played Horizon on PS4 the whole time. And, um, there's just some, certain games that it, PC you'll just get a better experience. And I think that for that reason alone, everyone should have a PC, like a at-home gaming PC. Everyone. Getting, everyone. Everyone. <laughs> and you're getting this upgraded PC for gaming. It's yes. going to be great, but you're also upgrading your monitor. Is yes. Your, is your current monitor, what's the refresh rate of your current monitor? Is it, uh, they're is it above all, 60? Or? They're, if, if what? Your current monitor, is it 60? Refresh, oh, I actually don't know. Probably, such probably, a, well, it's probably 60. Like, yeah, it's so probably 60. So your new monitor, we'll talk more about that tomorrow, but your new monitor has 144, I think, hertz refresh rate. I don't know, rate. but it's a fucking... Yes. Sorry so with your language, gaming, <laughs> No, sorry, you can cuss it's all beautiful. you want. It's uh, beautiful. Cuss all you want. Yeah, so you're going to have the horsepower to really power yeah. this monitor, and you're going to yeah. see the difference that console games just oh can't... Oh, my God. They can't so do that. It's we'll we'll show it off tomorrow, but Samsung sent her a 49-inch ultra-wide 
LED 144 hertz. Hurt. You've seen, I think we posted once on our Instagram, the ultra wide monitor. It's, it's an animal. It's like three 27 inch monitors. It's beautiful. Combined. It's huge. You should see the box. It's, it's beautiful. In. I've seen the box. It's I haven't taller. seen it myself in person, yes. like out of the box, but yeah. <laughs> it's taller Leslie's than some human at it beings. Right now, and I'm <laughs> yeah. looking at it too. Uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. And it, that's the problem with my current setup is like, I have these weird sized uh, desktop, uh, sorry, monitors, and uh, they're all super old and like from random companies. So it'll be nice to have one smooth. <laughs> She's going to be life changing. It's it is. going it's to be. Crazy. This whole trip has been pretty life changing, awesome. awesome. I gotta say. Awesome. First time in Miami, a lot of firsts for me. So. Uh, so Naomi, where can people find you on Twitter, on yes. Twitch, on all that good stuff? Uh, pretty much everywhere. So my hashtag back in the day used to be hashtag Naomi everywhere. I've since retired that hashtag, but um, <laughs> so you can get get uh, Twitter. Twitter has the same, just my name. It's the same as Twitch. It's just Naomi Kyle. Uh, if you go to Facebook, it's uh, Naomi Kyle fans because I haven't been able to get just Naomi Kyle yet. Well, I've been tagging the wrong one. Oh no, that's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> On Facebook, you've been tagging the wrong one. <laughs> that's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, now you know. Yeah, now you guys know. So you can go to Naomi Kyle fans, and then if you want to uh, check me out on Instagram, uh, which is one of my like favorite platforms. Um, I love Instagram. Yeah, is uh, the the Naomi Kyle because again, someone else has Naomi Kyle. She hasn't used it though. She has not. Oh, she's one of those squatters just sitting no, on just it. Yeah, she, on but it. she uses it for like comments and things, but doesn't actually post anything to it. Oh. Anyway. Hmm. Come on, Naomi Kyle, give it up. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's the Naomi Kyle, and then uh, for uh, I already mentioned Twitch. Uh, for YouTube, it's Naomi Kyle too. So I, I got a few of those platforms where I have my actual just regular. Yeah. Awesome. So shoot her a follow. Everyone watching, please. Yes, definitely. Um, do you mind sticking around for other segments? Oh yeah, always. Awesome. So up next, we're gonna do staff predictions with Naomi Kyle. <laughs> oh, look at that! Beautiful. That's why I need to. <laughs> Thank you to Elgato. <laughs> Just like this. <laughs> Thank you to Elgato for providing our capture card and our streaming PC. Um, Naomi will be tagging along for the rest of the segments. In staff predictions, we'll be making predictions on some topics. It could be an educated prediction, but knowing us, it's not going to be. Uh, <laughs> the first topic is who do you think will win the Super Bowl and why? Let's start off with Kevin. Oh, start off with Kevin. Um, Super Bowl is definitely going to be the AFC. Patriots. I'm not a fan of the Patriots, but you just can't beat him. You can't beat Tom is there Brady. Any fans out there? You can't beat this <laughs> guy. He's like a robot. Can't I know beat that him. Name. He's impossible. Yes. So I think the Super Bowl. Impossibly I'm great. Impossibly great. <laughs> the goats. <laughs> they call the most him. winningest. So I'll be watching the Super Bowl. I'm not going to be necessarily rooting for either team because I I don't think it's going to have much of a chance. But I'll be watching those commercials. Oh yeah. 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 Actually, those commercials are kind of. Why I watch it too, and the performance. The performance, right? Mm -hmm. What about you? Who do you think is going to win? Going to go with the Patriots, also? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am famously not a very uh, avid sports watcher. So, um, is that what you call yourself? Yeah. A sports sports. Sports. Watcher? sports so watchers. who's playing? Who's playing in the Super Bowl? Please tell us. <laughs> Kevin, you, you know uh, the uh, the panda. Riders and the that sounds weird. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the Seahawk horses. Yes. Uh, the Philadelphia riders. Eagles and New England Patriots. Perfect. Whoa! Perfect. Nailed it. Nailed <laughs> it. Panda yeah, riders and Seahawk horses. I didn't know it either. Do not feel awful. I am also not an avid sports watcher. At all. I don't know if that's what you I watch the UFC. Yeah. That's pretty much my only sports. Yeah, I used to watch hockey. Like, I know hey, a that's bit sports. about hockey. That's sports. Like, I know Canadian A. <laughs> Canadian A. I'm definitely Canadian. Yep. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Patriots, too, just because they win everything. And that's all I hear. So I can't go wrong. I don't, oh, I'm don't. i not going not for them. For I'm not going for them. But <laughs> She's like, I would boo. probably go for the Eagles, but I'm, I'm going to think the Patriots are going to win. <laughs> uh, speaking of the Super Bowl, though, yeah. Kevin, what's the next topic? Uh, next topic is what do you think will be the best Super Bowl ad or movie trailer? Oh, your, movie your trailer. Your choice. <gasps> what do you think will be the best, the most talked about, you know, non-football game thing happening during the Super Bowl? Is it going to be a, a, one of the commercials or a movie trailer? Mm. Alexis, do you want to go first? Sure. Mm. I think I'm going to go with, I think Doritos and Mountain Dew are going to take the cake because they've recently collabed on some amazing commercials. They had a... Uh, Peter Dinklage on the Doritos oh, side that. and Morgan Freeman on the Mountain Dew side and it was like the epic they were mouthing over like really fast rap songs but perfectly Oh, I need and to it was see such this. I'm not awesome seeing about this on Twitter. It was such I'm a cool watch it commercial. Right after this I loved it. So I loved that's it. Yeah, official? We'll show, we'll I saw somebody after. post about that also, and yeah. I thought it was just like a fan. Very thing. official. Oh. With Peter Dinklage, it's a Busta Rhymes song. 
and with um, Morgan Freeman, it's a Missy Elliott song. And ah, Missy Elliott so and Buster Rhymes are in the commercials as well. Wow. It's awesome. It's such a well-done commercial. So I think if they keep going that route, their Super They're Bowl gonna ads win. are going to absolutely kill it. That's my prediction. All right. Do you have a prediction? Uh, I don't know. I think... So there's a Keanu Reeves commercial going around. Ooh. Uh, my mom, she texts Keanu. famous, like famously. I love that word. <laughs> I don't know. She's using it today a lot. Uh, my mom, she loves Keanu Reeves, and she'll text me anything and everything that's going on with him. I don't know. She just loves him. Keanu. So she she found out he was doing a Super Bowl commercial and that I should watch it. I haven't seen it yet, but I bet it's going to be awesome. So I'm predicting that that's going to be great. Then again, I don't know what movie trailers to expect, and I think movie trailers are awesome. So, uh, what were some big movie, movie trailers. trailers that were revealed during the Super Bowl last year? Last year, year? man, yeah. I can't remember. I don't I know, remember. but this year there's a rumor of Han Solo, right? <gasps> oh, yeah, okay. that would be awesome. Han Solo oh, did movie they, trailer. I think they did the, that might take it. the Last Jedi last year, wasn't it? Mm. No, Last Jedi last year was, was announced during. during Monday Night Football. Oh, that's right. Mm. So I, was, I knew it was a football event. I was no, close. Because you Disney owns ESPN. And, you know, oh, that's yeah. yeah. True. Well, so, then I think I yeah, think Solo will win yeah. then. If, yeah, if it's true. I don't, I don't know if it's true. That would be crazy. But I have a prediction. My prediction is actually Wendy's. I think Wendy's will be the most talked about thing. Really? They're going after McDonald's and their commercial. Oh. oh. And I you know, the this. Wendy's Twitter is fire. Their, 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 so their I love their Twitter. Their Twitter is fire. So the Wendy's team... They're going after their competitor. Also, right their there. chicken so burger. We'll see what's up. <laughs> their chicken burger is also fire. Yeah. Um, okay, final topic. Do you yes. think that Red Dead Redemption 2 might be delayed again? Or do you think it'll actually come out in October? Uh, I don't think it'll be de delayed again, <sighs> personally. Cyber. Agreed. I think it's a lock. It's a lock for October 26th. Yeah, I think Rockstar has gone through already too many delays to yeah. delay it further. They'll just upset their audience. Yeah, and I think the good sign is that they gave it a precise date this time. Yeah, before it was and like, they released really screenshots, the and they were like, yeah, this is a done game, we're doing this. I hope, I hope you're right. Yeah. Didn't, didn't Grand Theft Auto V come out in October? Yeah, so yeah, October so. is like, that's their, that's that's their kind sweet of their, spot. Yeah, that's kind of their month, you're right about that. But RIP Please. to the other games in October that were like, oh no. <laughs> Which ones? Uh, well, Battlefield Now is coming out in October, right. which oh, they'll, they'll, yeah. they'll still do fine. They'll still yeah. do fine. Yeah, it's not. But there's got to be. There has to be somebody out there that was well, like, "Oh man, we're not releasing in October." I'm now yeah. competing against Rockstar. Oh, uh -oh. so you think they'll like bail out or like delay their game? For sure, that's yeah. a big part of it. They they know what maybe, other games are coming out and they'll probably delay yeah, themselves. Yeah. Maybe yeah, sure. Anthem was delayed because of that. Maybe you never know. Possibly. Oh my gosh, when's Anthem coming out? It was supposed to be this year, and they officially bumped it to 2019. 2019 uh, now. Makes sense, though. It's such an ambitious game. And, it really uh, is. And Bioware really needs to get their stuff together. So. Yeah. I'm excited for that one, too, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that's going to be a good game. Yeah. Um, okay, up next we have Ask Origin BC. Hopefully you guys have been asking questions in chat. Yes. Now we're going to answer them. What do we got, Lewis? Lay them on. All right, uh, Scooby Doo asks, "What do you think of Rainbow Six Siege and Bitcoin mining?" Two very, random, <laughs> very topics. random topics in one question. Oh, uh, uh, go, you want you want to take this one? I don't have one? any. I okay. don't know. Bit, Bitcoin mining is a thing, and I'm not doing it. So okay, <laughs> cryptocurrency mining. I'll I'll discuss that first. It's affected gaming community in a pretty bad way because the prices of GPUs have skyrocketed uh, because of it, and it directly affects gamers, especially the do-it-yourself crowd. Um, so that's a bummer. I do. I am big into cryptocurrency though, and I like trading it. That's fun. But the whole mining thing sucks because, like I said, so the mining machines, the way they work, it takes about some of them have up to ten GPUs in one mining machine. So some of these miners go build like five plus ten systems. So that's like hundreds of GPUs. So the fact that these GPUs keep getting bought out so much is affecting the gaming community, mm. which is why a lot of people ask about it in here. It is a bummer, and hopefully it's just a phase that'll pass soon. Um, but yeah, it's a sad thing to see. That's that's my take on it. Rainbow Six Siege, though, to go to your other, <laughs> it's a random topic. To go to your other topic, yeah. is a fantastic game um, yeah. that I played quite thoroughly. And um, I heard it's taken off on console a lot now recently, which is weird. Yeah, I've heard right? a lot about it on console for some reason. Um, but the PC version is still fantastic, and I know a lot of people that play it, and that's what I still play every now and again. So I love it. Thanks for the question. Uh, yeah, I love Rainbow Six Siege. It's intense. It's a fun game, and they keep adding I'll play content. With you guys. They keep adding yeah, content. Let's do it. That's totally play with you guys. That's another stream in the future. Yeah. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> uh, Zena Love asks, "What is your favorite game?" I guess that's for all of us. Let's start it okay. off. Okay. Um, Half-Life, my favorite game of all time is Half-Life. I always really go back game. to that one. Of course, I also love 
Zelda, Legend of Zelda. But Half Life is my number Which one. Which Zelda game? Just the first um, one. My favorite Zelda of all time is the Super Nintendo one. Um, the name of it, but the 16 bit Super Nintendo Zelda. Oh, like the way oh, back amazing. in the day. Yeah, 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 yeah way, way back one. in the day. Oh, okay. However, the new Breath of the Wild is, I mean, top. Yeah, it's top, I mean come it's on. Top, right? It's yeah. amazing. It's I, a masterpiece. <laughs> I, but a lot of Zelda games are masterpieces, yeah, true. in my opinion. So, to give you my favorite game, it's kind of in your vein in that it's Portal 2. Oh, that's oh, my nice. favorite. Yeah, nice. that's my favorite hands down story, everything about it. Um, I love that world and kind of got onto it because of Half Life and, of course, the first Portal game. Um, but then I want to put some on mentions in there because uh, okay. I'm obviously, I'm, a, I'm also very known, I almost said famously again. <laughs> famously known. <no. laughs> I'm, I'm very known for my love of Mass Effect, which I know the newest game is not, I wouldn't compare it to the trilogy at all, but yeah, the, that whole trilogy is one of my favorite games and game, gaming franchise uh, as a whole. Um, I think for Zelda 2, I need to also make an honorable mention. It's really hard to pick your favorite game. Um, Ocarina of Time and Link Between Worlds. Also, want to shout out to those. Oh, I think yes. Link Between Worlds. The ending Very touched good. me so like I was like emotionally affected by that game. Um, and then there's Breath of the Wild too, which I played a lot of. Um, but I just wanted to drop those. And The Witcher and Dragon Age. Okay, now. Wow, all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think after the stream, you're gonna famously be known for saying famously. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least I will now. Everyone's gonna bug me on Twitter about that. Anyway. Um, my favorite game of all time. Very simple. I've talked about it a ton. Ultima Online. Ult Ultimate MMO. Oh, it's my nice. favorite MMORPG. Yeah, yeah. It's made by uh, was made by Richard Garriott of Portalarium Studios. Now Richard Garriott and Starlong. Um, it was my. F it's like the first ever graphical MMORPG that ever came out, and it was like my first introduction into MMORPGs. Mm. It was such a cool little world. It's like a 2D, not 2D, but it was isometric, kind of like how Diablo looks. But it was such a fun experience. Like I learned everything about gaming from that game, and it's still a game I go visit every now and again. I think it came out in 1996 and I still play it to this oh, day. Oh wow. You know what's a game I still play uh, in, Rain in like speaking of Rainbow Six is uh, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Oh that's a good one. Nice. It's the only console I have at home le like is the PS2. That's the only one I have left. And it's at my parents house. Sorry. I mean not at home. At my home I have a ton of <laughs> consoles but my parents house when I go visit that's the only console I have. And so I'll, just play I'll, Splinter Cell. I'll play Splinter Cell and go that's back awesome. to that. Yeah it's a good game. Wow that's I would so cool. love a new Splinter Cell. That would be that amazing. Would be neat. Right? An updated Current generation I just wonder, Splinter I'm, Cell, come on. Yeah, I don't know. It'd be great if Tom Clancy, like, I don't know, as a franchise, like, games, movies, like, I don't know, is it dead? Like, I haven't heard so any. That's true, anything there hasn't been much stuff about and, it like, lately. Be refreshed or anything, so. I guess E3? Rainbow Six Maybe was E3? a Tom Clancy. We'll see, E3. Game, right? Yeah, Rainbow Six was Tom Clancy, too. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. It's, I guess it's still ongoing. One yeah, of the reasons E3, so now I'm thinking, don't hear about it as much. Now I'm thinking we're going to see Splinter Saw at E3. That's <laughs> now that we're crazy. talking about it. That'd be crazy. Uh, like what else do we have? Or something awesome. Uh, Fenny Bull asks, Koozie, when are you coming to Malaysia? I don't know, man. I was asked that <laughs> too Koozie, recently. Specifically to Koozie. Yeah, when are you going Fenny Bull's the man. Um, Fenny Bull, I would love to travel the world. It is one of my life's passions, so hopefully soon. And I will definitely hit you up, my friend. Send him a plane ticket. Yes, send me a plane ticket. I'll be out there tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, DX News All Day 100 asks, what's your guys' opinion about Sword Art Online? So Sword Art Online is kind of what Ready Player One talked about. It's an old anime where it's an MMORPG where it's all virtual reality, but in Sword Art Online, the player got stuck in there. Oh. So they Spoiler. kind of lived in that world. Yeah. Well, I mean, they introduced <laughs> it right at the beginning. Um, I think that story premise is awesome, and I think that it would be a huge misstep if someone doesn't make a game now that the virtual reality craze is coming out. I think it's actually being worked on, if I'm not mistaken. But I think that would make an awesome M MMO based off that world in virtual yeah. reality. Yeah. I think that would be the coolest thing. Wow. I would just I think anyone would be afraid to get stuck in the world like it happened in the in the show. I think that would be the biggest fear. Yeah, that would be scary. Uh, no one special. Ah. You're man. special. You're special to us, man. <laughs> what do you think of the Far Cry 5 season pass? Uh, I'll take that one first. Yeah. Uh, I don't know specifically about the Far Cry 5 season pass. However, Just season, season passes, in, passes general? in general, I'll give you my opinion. Um, I don't fall for them anymore. I used to fall for those things all the time. I used to always buy the season pass. But at the end of the day, by the time the new content comes out, me personally, I've already moved on. So I don't really go back and play like Assassin's Creed, Origins, uh, uh, added new content, but I haven't gone back. I finished the game. 
I moved on. Mm. But if you're the type of gamer that you're you're gonna want to go back to it, and the yeah, season the pass is worth it, everything. it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go for it. Yeah. But if you're on the fence, you know, don't don't fall for it because you could always buy it separately afterwards. You don't True. have to buy it up front. True. Huh? What is he adding there? That's what's actually going to be in the season pass. It looks like Vietnam, Mars, Mars, Mars and, and zombie, zombie campaigns. campaigns. Vietnam, wow. Mars, and zombie campaigns. After seeing Bye. that, I think I'll they go for the season do, pass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They need to do a Far Cry 5 Blood Dragon 2. Oh, something. that'd be amazing. That does sound awesome, but I'm not going to fall for it. <laughs> you know, I will buy it for me when it comes out. I'm kind of on the same boat. I don't go for season passes unless it's a game I know I'm going to stick to. Like, I think the only season pass I got was for Zelda. I can't even remember the last season pass I bought. I fell for that one. I bought that one. Yeah. See, I bought the Zelda season pass, and I played the first DLC, and and the second DLC, I have not played. So now I feel like I fell for it. (laughs) I fell for it. (laughs) What about you, Naomi? Are you going to get it? Uh, I'm not going to get the season pass, I don't think. No. Are you on the same boat? If it's it's what they described, I'm... I don't know. It would have to be, like, an additional part of the story. Right. It seems to me it's just, like, a change-up of the whatever's in the world and to make it more, you know, Vietnam-based or... Based, but Something I, to buy separately, probably. I guess once you see the trailers, then you kind of yeah, gauge. Like if I yeah, if I see something that really appeals to me and I do want to play all three of those things, I then yeah. But it really would have to sell me. I'll tell you the one time I regret not getting a season pass was for Fallout Four because I played oh, all those DLCs and yeah, I bought them separately. Yeah, actually, <laughs> you're right about that. Yeah, I played all those DLCs and we did live streams about it too. That but was that was game. that was IGN's dollar, not mine. So I don't know. Ah, suckers. <laughs> <laughs> um. What do you think about Death Stranding? Yeah, I saw the trailer. Yeah. The plural. They're Trailers all crazy. The They're same. awesome. I, I am a, a, a huge fan of uh, Guillermo del Toro and okay. everything that he does. Yeah, me If you too. guys haven't seen uh, Troll Hunters, you're doing yourselves a non-favor. You need to go see that show right <laughs> now. Uh, but Guillermo del Toro is amazing and uh, Hideo Kojima. Like, you really can't go wrong with that in terms of game. This game is so... It's going to be like the talk of the town for like five oh, years, for sure, for, for sure. a long time. So I am have very high hopes, and I'm already loving what I see, and it's super weird, and I love that. <laughs> uh, like I'm one who's like big into like Fringe. Did you guys ever watch oh, the yeah. show Fringe? Fringe? Like that weird stuff that yeah. goes down in there. So <laughs> I am all for this craziness that uh, they're presenting, and I can't wait to play it myself and and see what it's all about. Fringe was an awesome show, man. I forgot about that. I know. It was a great show. Yeah. Um, so Death Stranding, X-Files. I find completely confusing. I just don't get it. I don't. I love it. I'm going to play it, but I've never, I never understood any Metal Gear game I played. They always go with these wacky, crazy stories that I just don't understand. Mm-hmm. And Death Stranding seems to be going in that direction. So right on. I think you're, <laughs> I'm you're doing it right. Well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm in for it. Yeah, I'm in for the... Because it's so weird. It's like, what is this game actually about? I know. I still like, don't I need know. to play just for that. And not to mention the fact that it's a Hoodie Kojima game. And you mm-hmm. know it's going to be... It's going to play well. It's going to be great. It's going to be everything that we can expect. And we still of. don't really know what type of game is it. Like, no is idea. An action game? Right. Is it an RPG? Yeah. 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 And I just know for world. the story, like Guillermo del Toro, you can't... These are... The combination of these two people is, like, perfection. <laughs> That's all i got to say about that. <laughs> uh, so Danny Blanco says, Ask Naomi if she returned her DVDs back to the video store in Quebec on time. Or did she get late fees on her account? No, I. so <laughs> thank you for asking that. Uh, so it's part of a, my videos that I put out in relation to the trip I made back to Canada, where there are actual video stores. What? Wow. They still, still exist. in existence? It's amazing. Yes, yes. That's, that's why I made a video. What are they called? They're just, well, they're called Videotron, which is like a blockbuster franchise br- type brand that is only in Quebec, I think. I don't think it's across Canada. Um, but they're still around, and I think my reasoning, at least, is that it's because there's a lot of ski hills and rural areas that uh, don't have sure access don't have to internet. good uh, internet or cable. They all rely on satellite, which never works. <laughs> never. If you're ever sold, like oh, like especially on cruise ships where they use satellite uh, oh, internet yeah. or TV, I've done don't that. buy that package. You will not. It will not work. Like not. E- like it won't even work on your phones. Okay. So don't buy it. There is no such thing as Wi-Fi on a, a boat, and and especially in these rural places in Canada, um, they just all rely on satellite, which again does not work. So um, and the cable is super wonky. So uh, I think video stores are prominent there because people don't know what to do if they don't have access to entertainment. They'll just go to a video store and rent something. So that's what I did on my trip because we were at a cabin in the woods and it was far off from civilization. So we had to go rent movies to get our entertainment or some form of it. And uh, I rented three movies and no, I did not acquire any late fees because I'm on top of my game always and um, I returned it on time and it was fine. 
Uh, for our younger viewers, let me explain <laughs> what a video store oh, is. Oh, yeah, like. I didn't realize uh, <laughs> we might have an, an age gap here. Back in our day, we used to rent <laughs> DVDs and movies from a place called Blockbuster Video. Not the internet. Yeah, which no is longer what you can around. Do now. Yeah. Very sad. Uh, the Wrath of God asks, which is better, the Eon 17X or the 17S LX? Really dependent on what you want. So the 17X is um, a 17 inch laptop that we offer. Uh, you can have up to a single 1080 in it. The 17S LX is the bulky, bulky one that we have. Could you consider that a desktop crazy. replacement? Yeah. Uh, you can have a 4K monitor on that one, or a 4K screen, I'm sorry. And that one you can have two 1080s and SLIs, so an absolute beast. Uh, we consider that one a desktop replacement, not something super portable, um, but an absolutely fantastic laptop that's that you can really transfer nice. from room to room, so it's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it for the questions. Thank you so much, guys, for participating, participating in Ask Origin PC. Mm -hmm. uh, now for Post of the Week. Dun, 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 Drum roll, dun. please. <laughs> so last week's topic was what kind of useful robot would you actually use and why? We received lots of robot concepts, oh. but we could only pick one winner. That would be It's Silent Shots on Twitter who wrote, hashtag Origin PC Live, I would like a robot that looks exactly like Danny DeVito. And I'd use him, I, all I'd use him for is to wash my walls and dance in the background on the videos, but I'd never acknowledge that he exists. People would freak out. Thank you, It's Aww. Silent Shots. <laughs> that, that would be so crazy. I would be one of those people that would freak out. I would I love, freak out. Yeah. And I don't find that a very useful use of a robot, <laughs> to be honest. To but, wash walls and yeah, dance and videos? but videos? congratulations on winning for yeah. Post of the Week. That's congratulations. Great. Thank you for that. Kevin, what's next week's topic? I'm glad you didn't mess up that wash my walls part. Oh, yeah. Wash my walls. I read that wrong the first time. I was oh, like, what? you almost went. Oh, yeah, hey. I could have done the wrong way. Next week's topic is the Winter Olympics are looking to merge a video game with one of their sporting events. What would you merge? Examples include merging alpine skiing with s ski free, or oh, merging man. bobsled ski -free. with wipeouts, or ice hockey with Rocket League. That one's my favorite. Which I think would be an amazing Make game. Make sure to use the hashtag OriginPCLive with your response, and we'll be picking the post of the week for next week's episode. Nice. Naomi, what sport and game would you merge? So, I did get prepped on this question, so I had time <laughs> to think about it. No, you're pretty <laughs> no, in the fourth I, wall. <laughs> I know, that's okay. I already told you guys, but I've been really fascinated with figure skating because of the movie I, Tanya. Um, ah. So I got back into that and I started watching a lot of figure skating YouTube videos. And So I would love to see a video game that has figure skating and uh, why not just throw in like dragons. Skyrim and like dragons <laughs> yes. and medieval stuff. Because that would be crazy. So your character would essentially be figure skating across the Alps, With a sword. fighting dragons, yeah. So shooting magic. Awesome. There is and a doing Skyrim. Doing pirouettes and, yeah. and uh, triple axles and quadruple axles. Skyrim and stuff. modding community, you've been challenged. I know there yeah. it is. You're officially on notice. One of the greatest, one of the greatest modding communities out there. If yes. you cannot make a figure skating game, we'll be very disappointed. I would love to play that. Do it actually. for us. Yeah. That would be Imagine fantastic. how hard it would be. I mean. It's a that would be difficult. So Already, no. figure skating is really challenging, and I can't believe some of the things they do in figure skating. Sometimes. I know it is pretty crazy. To yeah, see. with literal blades on their feet. You know, it's just asking for. They it. get this close to each other's faces. I know. <laughs> it's just insane. It's insane. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you for watching our show. Big thank you to Naomi Kyle. Thanks for, being for on having the show. me. Of course, it was a pleasure. Uh, guys, be tomorrow. safe. Yeah, <laughs> take care of yourselves. Have a great weekend. Tune in tomorrow, tomorrow at 1 p.m. EST. We will be live here, same bat channel, same bat time, um, except we'll be with Naomi Kyle on AMD. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be doing a live build of her new Millennium V3 gaming, streaming, content creation, everything PC. Uh, we can't wait to see you all there. Tune in. We love you guys. Have a fantastic evening. See you guys tomorrow. See ya.